this this video is sort of a response video. Um, I've had a few people sort of come forward and say, well, I'm sharing the same stuff all the time, um, and why don't I show more experiments? Why don't I share more experiments with everybody out there? Uh, and look, this video is just to say, I, I feel your pain. I feel where you're at. Um, I understand that, um, you know, for a lot of people out there, it is frustrating because we're sort of getting fed the same information all the time. Uh, but from my point of view, uh, the, there's several problems. There's several problems with what I'm trying to do. Uh, the first problem is that there's a lot of people uh, waking up to the technology. There's a lot of people that are coming into this new. So I've got to try and cater for everybody. Um, there's people saying they don't like the color of my website. Well, look, I'm sorry. You know, at the end of the day, it's it, it is what it is. Um, I'm trying to cater for everybody. I'm trying to do the best I can. I am trying to do something that um, really, to be honest, no one else has done. What I'm doing for people right now, um, and you've got to remember that this is something that I'm doing um, almost for free. You know, I, I get a few donations from time to time, uh, you know, several hundred dollars so far, uh, and it's very much appreciated, but it honestly doesn't pay for my time. My time is, is um, it's, it's a full-time job doing what I'm doing. It's a full-time job answering private messages. It's a full-time job answering emails. I do the best I can with, with the time that I have. I uh, also, at the same time, have uh, life outside of what I do, the same as everybody else does. So I have, have to make time for that as well. I uh, just want to go through, now I started this thread here, Partnered Output Coils, uh, Free Energy, had a lot of reads. I started this thread back in January the 16th, 2015. Okay, I started this thread after a lengthy discussion of coils and magnetic fields and all that sort of thing. Um, over here, magnet myths and misconceptions. I started this thread after uh, having a discussion here about this sort of technology. Um, before that, I uh, had um, posted many, many experiments uh, and no one ever took any notice whatsoever. All the experiments I posted were all completely ignored. Uh, not a single person commented, replicated, um, did anything about it. And I'm going to go and find one and I'm going to show you an example of that now. Okay, this is one of the experiments I posted. Um, this was back on April the 17th, 2014. Uh, this was in response to Akula's work, so all the Akula generators that used to run themselves that he used to show, uh, some of them being replications of Andrei Melnichenko's work, which was um, some just over a dec decade before, uh, also uh, running themselves. Um, so what I did was I investigated what was going on and I posted this experiment here. It's not going to fit on the screen. I do apologize. So I posted this experiment here. At the time I had two coils that were connected like this. Uh, now as the coil here is energized, okay, we're pushing current through this way, okay, uh, and out this terminal here. But when the uh, G0 and G1 are switched away, the current flow will reverse. Okay, so this coil here will then have a current that flows this way. This coil here is set up so that it bucks and then we get an output. Okay, uh, this was a very interesting experiment. Um, something that took me quite some time to uh, figure out. I, I did it many, 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 many times, tried lots of different things. Uh, now, what have we got down here? We've got yellow is the current, that's on the input. Okay, red is the voltage on the output. Okay, so this is our input current. You can see it's very short, very brief. Um, now, I, I've got to apologize because I think at the time, I think the scope was set on alternate channels so that the, um, the actual scope uh, trace uh, in time are not, are not lined up properly. 
Uh, so I'm going to assume that um, this is our input. Okay, uh, so this is the input voltage trace. Okay, so we're pushing it up to a, a reasonable sort of value uh, according to this trace here. What are we set on? We're set on channel 1, which is 20 volts. Uh, now that's set on, on an AC coupling. Oh, goodness me, it must be a measurement error. <laughs> Oh, it's a joke. I'll show you that in a minute. <laughs> Ooh, a measurement error. It's got to be. It's got to be because it's set on an AC coupling. Okay, so uh, zero greater cool line through the middle here. Now, if there's a DC offset to it, uh, we would be able to see it if it was set to uh, DC. Okay, so the zero line might be up or down if there's a zero, uh, if there's a DC offset. You know, we're back to our measurements. So I've got the input current spike here. Now instantly the input current is switched off. So our coil is on and then instantly it's off. Okay, uh, I, I believe this probably is the input pulse here. So this input pulse here uh, fits with this um, current input pulse here. Alright, uh, now at, at that particular time it switched off, we get a, a big spike in the negative or in, the, in this case it's actually the positive, it's probably just the way I've got the scope hooked up. But anyway, this is the big pulse in the negative. Um, now you have to remember in this particular setup, because of the circuit that we're using, I'll try and push that across again, because of the circuit that we're using, we have output, okay, even when the input's on. So this is this is a double, it's a double whammy if you like, uh, you get input, on, uh, sorry, you get output on the on the globe, um, which did I show the globe? No, I didn't. Globe is connected to this wire here. It's out over here. Okay, so we get output even when our input's on, because there's a coupling there between the coils, and also even though one of our coils is uh, electrically only part of the output circuit. Um, electrically this part over here is just this coil but we do have a coupling between the two coils and the coupling um, is enough to give us an output on that particular pulse uh, so what we're looking at here is we're looking at a voltage on the output that has uh, two it's a positive and a negative uh, spike uh, now I wanted to show that to everybody. I wanted everybody to have a look at that because I felt it was very very important um, It was part of some of the work that I was doing uh, prior um, Some of the work I was doing prior you can actually see uh, There's bucking coils right throughout my history some of the oldest experiments on my youtube channel are bucking coils if you look up um, uh, bucking coil uh, oscillation or transformer or transformer oscillation or anything like that uh, I'm going to be one of the first ones that comes up and as an experiment let's try it so bucking coil oscillation have I spelled it right all right so yep that's my one of my experiments um, 2011 July 18th 2011 Another one of my experiments, I'm not sure if it's my YouTube channel, doesn't look like it is, but anyway, it's December 2014. Um, I, I have, and, and this is something that I really want to make a point of saying, if you were to take the five years that I've been showing, um, what's actually, what is it, 19, four years, uh, almost five, if you take the five years that I've been showing what I've been showing, okay, part and output coils, I've been describing electromagnetic induction in perhaps the greatest detail that anybody has come out and described electromagnetic induction. Uh, I've provided hundreds of experiments uh, on my website, on my YouTube channel. Uh, if you were to take the five years that I've been doing this, take a snapshot of that and look at the progress, look at the overall progress of that snapshot and then compare that snapshot to five years before that, okay, we have made a huge difference, okay. 
my websites, the effort that I'm making, the information that I'm giving to people, um, the the videos that I make. Uh, yeah, sometimes it might cover the same thing on many occasions, but at the at the end of the day, you've got to remember I've got to cater for the other people as well. I've got to cater for the new people coming in. I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to help the new people, and then I'm trying to help the people that have got lots of experience already. Uh, and again, I apologise about that. Um, I can only do so much. I can only give so much information at a time. Um, uh, and, and you've got to realise that this something like this is going to take time. It's going to take time to um, to to move ahead. You know, I said this thread this thread is for those interested in moving ahead with free energy experiments in serious discussion only. Now we ended up with however many posts, uh, 542 pages uh, each with uh, I believe it's 10 uh, posts per page. Uh, most of that, most of that thread, most of that entire thread is uh, fighting and bickering and disagreements and mile high, honestly, mile high was one of the hardest people that I've ever dealt with in my life. Honestly, you must have had a bad childhood or something. Mile High is is just difficult. Uh, he was outright um, out to out to lynch me. He was out to lynch me with no matter what. Um, where's your data? You're a liar. You haven't got a COP 1.7 device. Well, hey, yes, I have. Um, even when halfway through the thread, even when Tin Man showed his rotary transformer, which was around about COP 1.7. What a coincidence. Um, even when that happened, he was still, no, it must be measurement error, it must be there's something wrong somewhere, all that sort of thing. Um, now, at the end of the day, this thread is mostly useless for everybody that comes to this thread. Most people would not even go through and read more than probably the first page. Uh, and we have to learn lessons from this because if we are going to put information out there, if we're going to share something of value, we want to make it so that people will first of all want to read it and then perhaps want to even share it after that. So we, we need to make sure that we've got something of value. Okay, It's very important, very important for the future. This is something that in the, in the future, in maybe five years down the track or so, as people are still learning, uh, as progress is made and as the realization is made that hey this technology really does work it's amazing wow I, I wish I'd listened to this prior and then we're gonna get, gonna get those people that are gonna say oh I've had this in my head forever and this is my technology and I, and I thought of it first and, and all that sort of thing well hey yeah at the end of the day what I'm sharing is not new what I'm sharing is something that I have learnt that others before me already knew. Okay, this is decades, perhaps even you know, old or even maybe a hundred years old. Um, we know for a fact that uh, Clementi Figura, uh, back in 1904, patented a device which um, almost exactly fits the same criteria as what I'm trying to show you, um, what I'm trying to share with you. Now this is, uh, again, this video is a little bit of a, um, just to show you what I'm really trying to do, just to show you um, what I'm sort of faced with here. Uh, this post here was posted on the same Partnered Output Coils Free Energy thread, 529 pages in. This is after I was banned from the website. Okay, um, Stefan Hartman banned me. Uh, because the user, um, what was his name now? Uh, Ramset. The user Ramset went to Stefan Hartman and complained um, that um, I was a troublemaker. Uh, you can go back and read the posts, but uh, I was not making any trouble at all. I asked Ramset to leave the thread nicely on many occasions. Uh, Ramset started getting all upset, um, started posting all sorts of weird and strange, wonderful posts. Uh, Ramset then went to Stefan, um, oh, Chris, Chris Sykes is a troublemaker, um, and then they, first of all, they, 
um, moderated me so I couldn't post anymore um, and then after that um, I was able to post. I was able to post because of, of a bug in Stefan Hartman's website uh, and I posted some some posts that perhaps were probably a little bit off. Um, now I sort of gave them the idea, I gave them a little bit of a honeypot to say that I hacked the website which I didn't. Um, that's absolute lies. Um, but I did put that in their minds just to sort of see if they would run with it, and they did. Um, they accused me of everything they could. Honestly, I, I was I was there. I wasn't making trouble at all. You can go back and you can read the threads um, if you really want to read the posts. Uh, I was trying to defend myself, and yes, there was frustration, but I was not making trouble with anybody. All I was doing was sharing the information. Now, several months before. Um, I had actually purchased another website, another website being AboveUnity.com, which most everybody's familiar with now. Uh, and I knew this was on the cards. I knew this was sort of going to happen at some stage. So I set myself up uh, with a backup plan. I think it's important. All smart people need to have a backup plan, and I don't think I'm really that smart. But if I didn't do it, then I would be dumb, sort of thing. So you need to have a backup plan. So I got myself together with a backup plan, and I thought, right, well, if this is going to go pear-shaped, well, we need something to fall back on. So I did. Um, uh, this this person here. Um, I really appreciate this post and I want to thank this person here. Um, uh, I think it's a fantastic post and it, it really did make my day when I saw it. Uh, this person obviously is smart enough to uh, link the technology, link what I was sharing with some um, amazing finds uh, at some of the universities, which some of them have been removed from the literature now. Um, but yes, it's this. This is a this is a very true, very accurate um, uh, response to what was going on. Uh, some people didn't like this, and some people sort of arced up. Um, whoever this is, this guy's a troublemaker. Uh, honestly, I, d I don't know how he's lasted as long as what he has. Anyway, there were some pretty nasty sort of posts. Po post backwards and forwards. Um, I like to read them, um, but I personally, I, I just can't be bothered with it. I don't have enough time to uh, you know, dedicate whatever to this person. Here's Ramset, famous Ramset. Um, I have a lot of information on this person. Uh, I'm not going to, to share the information. I don't see a need to at this stage, um, but I know everything about him. Um, I will tell you that he is Jewish. Okay, he was he is a Jewish uh, poster that posts in the forum all the time, um, and he was the uh, he was the main person with Stephen Hartman. Uh, him and Stephen Hartman uh, uh, who banned me from the website. Okay, which again I knew it was coming. I knew these people were doing what they were doing, shall we say as, um, what's the nicest way to say it, shall we say they were employed to make sure that this information uh, did not come out, okay, and they failed. So you got to think to yourself, um, now, um, when a cooler, when a cooler started releasing his work okay this is one of the Akula threads when Akula started releasing his work uh, it wasn't long before uh, Akula was approached by um, Steho Energy now Arthur Thacknell is the CEO of Steho Energy uh, it just so happens that Stephen Hartman is very good friends with Arthur Thacknell. Arthur Thacknell, again, the CEO of Steho Energy, approached Akula, and Akula was, um, shall we say, drafted into the Steho Energy um, uh, machine, 
Uh, now, as soon as a cooler was drafted, the sharing of information completely stopped. This machine was shelved, it was shut up, it was shut down. Uh, a cooler hardly even posts videos about the technology at all anymore. Uh, now, a bit of background on a cooler. A cooler was in the forums, especially in the forums over on Real Stranic, uh, the Russian forum. He was posting there for quite some time and he was sort of bragging that um, about the um, Terrell Kapanezi uh, machines and he was saying that he knew how they worked and um, he, he had a, a great background on um, electronics and all that sort of thing and he was trying to tell people how they worked and he used the same terminology that I've been uh, talking about for quite some time. He was talking about bucking coils, he was talking about you know things like um, uh, waves and uh, you know standing waves, all that sort of thing. Um, so he knew what he was talking about. Had a, a very good background in uh, TV technology, as far as I understand. He was fixing TVs for friends as a as a young fella. Did um, did some time, got trained up. Now I don't know if this is true. I've read, um, and I can't find it since. But I've read that he was trained by the military. I was I read that he went to, into the military, was trained as a, a radio a radio engineer by the military. So I don't know if that's true or not, so do your research, check that out yourself. But he definitely had a, a very good background in electronics. He knew what he was doing. He, he had a very good understanding of coils, capacitors, resistors, the whole lot. So anyway, a cooler was drafted into Steho Energy. Steho Energy is a very good friend of um, Stephen Hartman. Um, I believe the connection was made from Stephen Hartman um, uh, and Arthur Thacknell was told about Akula and his work and what was going on by Stephen Hartman. Uh, there's even some comments by Stephen Hartman. A very good friend of mine is, uh, or quote, a very good friend of mine is going out and he thinks it's all real, um, uh, unquote. Um, anyway, look, look up the um, look up the details because that sort of thing is real. It really does happen. Has been happening for decades. Okay, there's machine out there, and the machine likes to crunch, uh, crunch up the numbers and crunch up people with it. Okay, so um, again, a cooler's work was shelved. Try and find a single thing about it now. You're going to find maybe two or three channels out there that have some decent videos on a cooler, but there's nothing new. It's all old, it's all what people have saved separately on the side, uh, but it's been shelved, it's been shut down. A cooler is no longer doing what he was doing. Okay, so I just want to say again, um, publicly I've been doing partnered output coils um, since January the 16th, 2015. Uh, I've been sharing this image um, and, and another image like it, this is not the best image, I wish I didn't put this one up on the website, um, but I've been sharing an image like it um, for, for at least, um, you know, the, the duration here, which is nearly five years, and even a little bit before. Some, some of my websites have images of this image and images similar to it um, for well, as far back as 2011. I've been sharing this for a long, long, long time. I have um, helped change the mindset of people out there. People out there are starting to think along the lines of energy generation and starting to think of the, along the lines of magnetic fields opposing, uh, thinking about the current in the coil. People are starting to think about, well, there could be three actions here and not two like I've been showing for a long time. We've got a partner, uh, sorry, we've got a primary coil here in green, secondary coil, secondary coil, okay? Now, this is a three-stage three process. We have three coils, okay? Each coil is gonna create its own magnetic field. If we power up the primary coil, we're gonna get a magnetic field in the same direction as this arrow, but inside the core, okay? Inside the center of this, okay? When the primary coil is being powered up, if we power up this coil, we're going to get a magnetic field that's going to oppose the primary coil. Okay, so oppose the primary coil. This arrow shows that process. Okay, if we load this coil over here, 
okay we're going to get a magnetic field that's going to oppose this coil over here because we're going to set our timing to do it in that way all right now I want to show you a video there'll probably be some controversy over this video um, this is going to be a a full video full video length and I want you to think about what the words are that are being said in this video I want you to think about the person that's showing this video and I want you to think about the history okay if you were to go to this person's YouTube channel you would see zero and I mean zero indication of any work whatsoever that follows these principles okay zero work so from January the 16th 2015 back this person will have zero work that follows any of these principles these principles were pretty much brand new to the free energy community when I bought them when I bought them in okay there's no images there's no indication of anything like this technology until I brought them to the free energy community I, I was one of the first to have these sorts of uh, images being displayed okay nothing before so I'm going to show you that video now and um, hopefully you can make your own mind up uh, now initially what I do want to say is it does give you a pretty good description of what's going on okay so the description is good but also I want you to think about uh, what's being said in the video I want you to think about whose technology it really is I want you to think about whose technology they claim it is uh, and I want you to think about the um, the actual processes that are being talked about okay so what's being talked about is pretty much the exactly the same as what I've been sharing and what this kind person here where is it what this kind person here uh, has already said to people um, here so first magnetic diode for magnetic fields okay so I want you to think about that as well all right, here's the video now. All righty, uh, this may be a little hard to explain. I'll do my best. Um, and it's hard to explain because it's a first off. What you're looking at there is a magnetic field diode setup. So we'll run through it as best as I can. And... Uh, try and correct any mistakes as I'm going but uh, hopefully you'll get the general idea of what's going on here so we have a primary coil here um, a secondary coil and our field diode coil which I'm going to call that so our primary coil is being driven um, by my power supply at very low power it's about 12 milliamps, 12.2 um, milliamps to be exact according to the scope and we're running at 120 kilohertz at the moment. These are air core coils, each one has 120 turns on them, so they're all one to one. So in normal transformer action, um, oh, I've made this one smaller and wider because they're air core, the field tends to spread fairly rapidly and if we had the thinner coils as our primary the field would probably not even reach our secondary way back here so a very low power at the moment um, but it's just a test rig to see if the idea works now MIT have made a mechanical magnetic field diode setup where they have um, coils I think spinning inside a drum and um, that allows the magnetic field to induce the coil with the secondary but doesn't allow it to come back I wanted to achieve the same solid state and this can be taken a whole lot further than this this is just my first primary setup and like I said very low power we're at about uh, 12 milliamps at um, 14 volts but 
uh, we're only at a 15% duty cycle on the pulse <coughs> so not a lot and we've got a fair bit of distance for air core coils between our primary here and our secondary here as you can see the LED is lit surprisingly but it is lit um, so that gives us a starting point so in a normal transformer current flows through the primary the magnetic field shoots off in all directions but also passes through the secondary coil which induces the current <clears throat> so my primary coil is firing a north field into this secondary and the LED is um, biased so that the current will flow when that north field hits the secondary what would normally happen then is the secondary produces a counter EMF and a magnetic field um, that opposes that which created it shoots back this way um, and that shows up as the primary core having to work harder um, so once a load is placed on the secondary that load is reflected on the primary the primary uses more power to drive that load and the more we load the secondary up the more it's reflected on the primary which is what I wanted to get rid of so my idea how was um, before I built all this my idea my thought experiment was to have the primary shoot the magnetic field into the secondary current starts to flow through the secondary the secondary field will then start to head back towards the primary um, of course it doesn't do that it just sort of builds up um, which increases the load on the primary but uh, my idea was to have the secondary hit our field diode coil and this would also produce a north on this side stopping that field from imparting onto the primary well, the way we achieve this is this coil uh, we have another little LED here and we bias this coil so that the north field can pass through this coil um, and no current will flow because the north is hitting this side of the coil it will flow through that coil, hit this coil, this will start producing its counter field that opposes this one which is also a north and that would start to head back, hit this coil, this coil conducts and the magnetic field is contained within the in between these two coils here and stops it from hitting this coil once again this means that with this coil activated um, the load on the primary and the load on our field diode coil is not reflected back onto our primary secondary sorry the load on our secondary and our field diode coil is not reflected back on the primary because the magnetic field is trapped between these two coils <coughs> so we'll have a look on the scope and we'll see where we're at here okay so channel 2 the blue channel is across my CBR and channel 1 the yellow channel is across our LED so you can see the current rising um, through the primary coil and you can see that is when the LED is conducting so our transistor then switches off and we can see a little back spike in our secondary coil so our polarity is correct um, at the moment we're using uh, what is it 12.2 milliamps 12 to 12.2 milliamps RMS and the RMS voltage across our secondary coil at the moment is 2.11 volts so what we're going to do down here first is I'm going to place the LED across which is also a diode as you know across our field diode coil um, and I'm going to do it the wrong way around so as the magnetic field 
hits the base of this coil and then current will start to conduct. So what will happen there is um, this coil will induce this coil but this coil will now kill the magnetic field to this coil so when I place the LED in to our field diode coil we should see the secondary coil stop producing power our LED will go out. So we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so we can see that our secondary coil LED has gone out. That is because the field diode coil is now blocking the magnetic field because we have the LED biased. So it's once the north field hits our um, coil here, um, that then sends the opposing field back to our primary. And this will show up, like I said, it's only low power, but it will show up on the scope. Uh, we're now at 12.4 12 milliamps, so it's gone up 0.2 of a milliamp. Um, but you can see the voltage across our LED on the secondary now has dropped right down, 1.27 volts RMS. Um, we've nearly killed the inductive kickback spike. There's not enough voltage the LED to conduct and um, so now we have a normal transformer action happening between this coil and the primary. What I'm going to do now is turn this LED around so it conducts in the other way um, and that induction will come from this coil here uh, which is the magnetic field heading back towards our primary. That would normally impede the primary and cause it to uh, increase its power to keep the uh, load on the secondary going. So I'm going to put this in the correct way now. Um, watch the brightness of this LED when I do so. Okay, uh, oh you can't see that little LED down there. Anyway, um, so now our primary coil has gone brighter. Uh, our secondary coil is now producing more current, um, producing more power all, over, all up. Um, and our little LED across our secondary is much brighter. And we can have a look at that once again. Oh, just by taking this out. So that's without our magnetic diode in play. And that is with the magnetic diode in play. So not only is our LED across our secondary much brighter. We also have this one going even brighter again. And if we have a look at the scope we can see a number of effects. So we are still 12.2 uh, milliamps now even though we're driving two LEDs and much brighter than the primary LED was. Our inductive kickback spike has increased dramatically and as you can see by the waveform there is uh, much more power going through that LED on the secondary than there was without our field diode coil activated. So I'll just disconnect the diode on the field coil. So that is without it. Our RMS voltage across our LED is 2.06, 2.07. You can see how long the LED is conducting here. Time scale, 
12.2 to 12.3 milliamps. I will now hook the diode back onto our magnetic field diode coil, like so. Now you can see that our LED on our secondary is conducting a lot longer. Our current hasn't changed. Our RMS voltage across our LED on our secondary is now 3.77 volts RMS. That is due to um, the LED now conducting longer and also to the larger inductive kickback on that coil when that uh, transistor opens. But no reflection upon our primary coil even though we are now driving two LEDs quite brightly. I do have a lot of light going on in the shed so they may not look very bright but they are certainly very bright. And once again, uh, where's my screwdriver? I'll disconnect it and you can see now that's the primary is now inducing our secondary the best it can uh, very little output when we add our diode you can see it is now a lot brighter and absolutely no reflection on our primary coil. And that is because that coil is indeed acting like a magnetic field diode that allows the magnetic field to pass through this direction from our primary but does not allow the counter field to pass back through and work against our primary. <coughs> And the second effect is now the magnetic field between these two coils is quite strong, a lot stronger than this one here is putting out um, in relation to the primary and the secondary. And uh, we now can induce double the load. This one's actually a little brighter than this one. Um, so we now have more than double the load of what we had and we do not see any reflection at all on the primary coil. So it all works like it should. Now uh, the challenge comes in making a transformer that uses this um, that is very efficient. So this is not an efficient transformer, it's an air core transformer. Our coils are a long way apart. Magnetic field will be all over the place and not concentrated into the secondary. So I need to do this uh, using steel laminates, um, perhaps even um, soft iron wire instead of copper wire. Trying to find that that's um, enamelled is quite difficult, but uh, I'm sure we'll come up with something. That's what I wanted to show you. Um, this indeed is working like a magnetic field diode. Our field can pass through this coil to our secondary, but the field from the secondary cannot pass through this coil and impinge on the primary. So it's a uh, no load transformer, is what you're looking at there, due to us being able to block that counter field um, from working against the field of our primary. Alright, that's it. It's bloody cold out here. I'm going inside. Thanks for watching and I'll keep you up to date with all the progress made on this uh, setup here and hopefully we can make it a lot better. Hopefully we can get the efficiency over that 100% mark. Cheers guys. Alright, so if you want to take um, a positive note from the a video that I've just shown um, look at what actually is going on um, because the person that has shown the video does have a pretty good understanding of um, what's actually going on um, the coils that I've shown for 
uh, quite a few years now, uh, do work in the in the same principle that is um, being shown. You got to remember as well, this person did have a running device, the Rotary Transformer version three. You can go to my website, look up the Rotary Transformer from Tin Man. Um, no one could fault it. There was no measurement fault that could be found. It was running uh, roughly at about 1.8. Uh, COP equals 1.8 so it had um, uh, almost not quite but almost double the output power is what it did on the input power um, the same principles as what I've been talking about for quite some time uh, apply to the machine some of them um, don't appear to be understood by Bradley yet uh, it appears that Bradley's still in a a, a very steep learning curve um, and some of it Bradley seems to be doing quite well uh, some of it he doesn't so um, I think it's I think it's very important this technology is uh, it's decades old it's not not my technology but I have come forward in the free energy community uh, to share this technology um, to make progress as a whole uh, and I really want to stress that point the whole community needs to progress otherwise no one can progress there's no point having one or two out there that are going to keep the machine secret have free energy for the rest of their life there's no point in doing that we either do it as a species all together uh, progress together and move forward uh, or we unfortunately we're doomed we if we don't do it together we are we are not going to survive as a species it's only a matter of time so uh, like I said if you want to take something positive out of the previous video look at the actual description look at the actual uh, experiment that's going on uh, compare, compare that to what I've been talking about now for the last five plus years uh, and you will find that the device is almost exactly the same uh, now, Bradley was very close with his analogy, but he did miss a few points. Uh, those that have um, followed my work for some time will be able to find those points and uh, progress. Uh, what Bradley said is uh, that it can be uh, improved a great deal, and that's true. It can. The, the, what, what Bradley is showing you is just a toy. It's just a concept. It's just an idea. Um, but again as I say that is how it works um, this this is something that I've been showing again I've been showing this for well for, for a long time okay it's the same technology whether Brad wants to admit it or not um, he has taken my technology before uh, taken full credit for it initially he gave me credit for for what he was doing and then he retracted it um, I think he might have had a few little goons in his ear one of them being um, uh, pick a what which seems to have disappeared off the scene anyway uh, this is what a, what the video is about uh, Murphy Brown I uh, want to put a big shout out to him um, I very much appreciate your comment I appreciate how you feel um, I'm in a position that if I end up disappearing gee whiz if I show scope shots that are um, not a hundred percent I might have AC coupling instead of DC coupling then it's got to be fake technology okay there's a story behind that and I'll show you that down here before uh, in a minute okay so I've replied a couple of times appreciate your posts um, please come and join us please come and experiment with us on our forum we are a very friendly bunch we will not um, put you put anyone down okay we're a friendly bunch and we're here to help we're here to progress as a species not as just a single person okay we are we are not trolls we will eliminate trolls from our forum we already have sometimes they come to um, visit us read our pages and they try to you know sign up an account be fake and all that sort of thing but it's not long before we get rid of them okay I've got a big red button a troll troll killer button a big red button that just up oh, gone anyway on with uh, what we're talking about okay so I have replied if you read that reply very quickly um, there is a very good reason for that I'll share that with you now uh, if I'm gone if they get rid of me 
there'll be no one uh, to do my job. Uh, they've desperately tried. Okay, many, 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 many times um, I have had problems with trolls, especially on overunity.com. That place was absolutely filled with trolls. Uh, it doesn't matter what you say, what you're trying to share, they're going to shoot you down. If you're anywhere near um, the mark, if you've got technology that they know to be um, real working technology, they are going to shut it down. It's their job. It's it's how they it's how they roll. It's what they've got to do. Okay, uh, I've changed the rules. We no longer play their game, and we don't. Okay, what we've done is we've said, right. Okay, you guys behave however you like. We're gone. We're going to do it somewhere else, and you're not coming. Okay, we don't play their game anymore. Uh, we have our own game. Uh, rules, typo there, I do apologise. Rules they lose by automatically uh, every time. Uh, we have left them jobless, and we literally have. The CIA goon squad, which I used to call them, now are scrambling, resorting to releasing fake energy machines. Please, everybody, beware. Beware. They are releasing fake energy machines and then supporting them they don't work, but they tell you that they do. They're getting everybody to go down rabbit holes now. This is the latest tactic they're into. Um, they're still in control because people let them. Okay, People that go and read their pages and support them, blindly support, it, support them when they don't know any better, uh, they effectively are keeping that troll machine going. Okay. Uh, you all have the choice. Uh, it will continue for decades to come if you let it. Okay, so true. All right, what I wanted to do here is actually give Murphy Brown an example because I think he deserves an example. Okay, in that post there, you'll see uh, the trolls tried to lynch me over ACDC coupling on the scope. Uh, before this, I made experiments with Professor Stephen E. Jones. See for yourself. You can go and visit the link. Uh, we did quite a few measurements. I did learn um, at that stage, and also I had a very good friend at that stage um, that was teaching me all about scopes. I knew the difference between AC and DC coupling. Okay, uh, generally, yes, the rule generally should be that people should be using DC coupling, but it's not critical. Okay, the difference between AC and DC coupling will show what's called a DC offset. Okay, so a DC coupling will show the DC offset, but an AC coupling won't. Okay, now um, I'll go through here uh, in a minute. I'll, we'll get to that in a second. But it's not true and it's not correct to call measurement error if someone is not using DC coupling. Okay, what should be done is it should be asked for, oh, can you show us a scope shot with DC coupling? And then a decision can be made or you've got DC offset but at the end of the day the scopes going to account for that okay if it's DC offset there will be a, a, the scope will account for that within the measurements of the scope and uh, you obviously have to be aware of what your power supply is able to supply as a power supply uh, and at the same time you have to be aware of which way your your current is traveling okay so that there you have to be aware of what's going on uh, Alright, so I um, also know the difference between uh, AC and DC coupling um, and what the difference is. Uh, one troll even admitting the problem when I confronted them. Now I might show you that very quickly because uh, it is true. It is true that um, what I've said there is true that you don't necessarily need to have um, DC coupling. Uh, now, this person is very knowledgeable with electronics. I have a little bit of a background detail on this person. I know that they've been very experienced in electronics for a long, long, long time. Once again, uh, this is not true. Eliminating, eliminating raw DC offset is only one of the effects. Well, sort of, but not really. Uh, down here, he actually comes through uh, by true AC wave okay and this is this is the point true AC wave you've got to remember AC is just alternating current 
okay if you mean strictly pure sinusoidal waveform with zero DC offset then you are correct okay zero DC offset it's it's not going to it's not correct to call measurement error which is what these people do if the um, uh, if 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 the if there's a DC offset it's not true to call that you can't call it a measurement error if it's DC offset and that's what these people do uh, let's have a look I think it's this one yeah this is it okay uh, same person okay first thing they do is call AC so it's AC coupled on both channels uh, now the admission from the same person if it's a pure sinusoidal wave with no DC offset then there's nothing wrong with using AC okay you need to know this this is stuff you need to know um, and like I said before generally what we should be doing is we should get in the habit of using DC coupling uh, because DC coupling does give us more information on the scope okay but at the same time it's not wrong to use AC coupling these people he is this person here has admitted it in the last post I showed you um, all right so again uh, Murphy Brown I just want to give a shout out uh, thanks very much for posting uh, I feel your pain I know that you want to see more um, but again uh, I, I mean I make mistakes I do make mistakes from time to time I am not perfect I make mistakes on the scope I make mistakes here there and you know a few other places but what I want to tell you up front straight up uh, is this machine the, the, this technology that I'm sharing works it does work okay there is proof out there if you come to my website if you read my website you'll see several machines using exactly the same technology that do work now there is a trick it's a little bit hard to replicate this uh, technology you, you do have to have an understanding the previous video that I just showed is um, is a good start it's a good starting point but hey I've said it all along look for the effects you don't need to the first machine you build you don't need to expect a, a 500 watt increase on the output because it's probably not going to happen unless you're really lucky uh, you need to look for the effects you need to understand what's going on and it's extremely easy to to lose the understanding of what's going on and keep going without realizing it uh, you need to have in the back of your head and it needs to be drilled in you know I used to I always used to get told when I did my apprenticeship you know you need to know what you're what you're talking about you need to know what you're doing you know they drill it into you you do four years of apprenticeship um, so that you know that what you're doing is 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 a professional uh, you need to know what you're doing it's that's why you do the apprenticeship you know you you spend four years learning you, it gets drilled into your head uh, and this is what I'm trying to do I'm, I'm trying to um, get yeah, those people that are interested I'm trying to give them um, the information I'm trying to give them um, the guidance that that I try that I try to understand how people need might need help uh, I just try and do the best I can you know I mean some people come they criticize they don't really spend any time to learn um, this person Jeffrey Dove um, your videos never help anyone well I'm sorry buddy but if that's the case then you probably don't really want to come and watch my videos then uh, it's the same time it's the same in every video well hey sometimes it is you know at the end of the day this particular video that I've shared this time has more detailed information in it um, than any other video I've shared uh, and the name on this video coil fundamental processes part of the secret veil series and and this is um, I what I am asking people to do is think more broadly okay what I'm sharing in this video has a it's it's a well-known technology it's not it's not technology that's not known but for those people that don't know about it need to think more broadly about it so um, so watch the video 
understand try and understand the technology that I'm that I'm sort of trying to share because like I've said in the video um, inductive reactance is not new it's been known about we know about it um, it's a, it's a technology that's already existing but what I'm saying is think more broadly about it because there's reactants everywhere everything reacts to something you know if you have three coils you're going to get reactants if you do it right between all three coils and three coils means most of the time not all the time but most of the time that you're going to have a different reaction in each coil so you need to look for that and you need to encourage that reaction which would be action reaction and then counter reaction which is three different actions in the coils so uh, Jeffrey Dove, I'm really sorry that you're upset. I'm really sorry that you don't like the color of my website. Uh, I've replied here. Um, uh, you have your opinion. That's cool. Uh, however, I think um, if you took a snap sh snapshot of the last five years, compare it with the five years before that, uh, we've made more progress as a group than any other period. And that's true. That is so true. Uh, the free energy community today the free energy community is based around bucking coils. I have brought bucking coils to the community. The community has accepted it. The community is starting to is starting to learn some information that is much more broad than what the what the community was doing before I come along. I believe firmly. Okay, all you need to do is just go and re read a few different websites. I believe firmly that the information that I've shared over the last five years has made a huge difference. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry, but I do. That's just what I believe. Uh, and perhaps that's why you come to watch my videos. Um, and again, what I've done here is I've tried to give Jeffrey Dove, I've tried to give Jeffrey Dove a leg up. Okay, go and watch these four videos. And these four videos are Bradley Richard Atherton's, aka Tin Man's, uh, four uh, Rotary Transformer videos, okay, um, which is based on the same technology as, as what I have been sharing. Um, again, he initially he admitted it. Come through the several posts that he said, yeah, okay, it's um it, it it works just the same as what Chris is trying to tell everybody. Okay, no one could fault the the measurements. The experiment was flawless. Uh, many professionals. Um, went through checked the information that Brad was giving them and they couldn't fault it there, there was no fault that no fault found uh, and then all of a sudden it disappeared off the scene okay these are videos that I've saved um, and, um, and shared separately um, so I've said look go watch these videos um, uh, now is that enough information for you to be able to replicate the RT you know watching those four videos you've got to ask the question is this enough information to replicate the machine uh, do you think that's enough information um, how you know how much above unity was the machine did um, Jeffrey Dove you know pause the video did he do some calculations uh, did he realize how much above unity the machine was um, how much above unity uh, was the machine w when loaded with the fan okay this is an interesting point this is something that if, if you're watching the videos go through and ask the question figure it out why has the fan changed the output measurement on the machine so much uh, ask yourself why is Bradley no longer sharing information about the RT well the last video was was very close to um, the RT but Bradley has dumbed it down somewhat um, I don't know his reasons for doing what he's doing but what he's doing seems to be a bit odd um, why is Brad not even discussing the key technology beneath the surface uh, and then I say keep me posted on your progress uh, Jeffrey Dove I'm sorry buddy I've tried the best I can with what I've got um, hey if, if you're a millionaire and if you're happy to throw us you know some dollars my way I'm more than happy to go through and pay some professionals to redesign my website and get it just how you like it if that's what you want to do then how about you come forward give us some some dollars to actually try and help us out support us a little bit so that we can get the website up to scratch just so that you know I have designed and built 
the website um, almost purely I've used third-party software so the code that's underneath the website is um, using third-party software and I want to throw a shout out to Yoda is my dad thanks very much for excellent product um, but the look and feel of the website is purely my design I have done the best I can uh, a bit of a um, bit of a jack of all trades I try and give everything a bit of a go so yeah I apologize if you don't like it then um, yep do something about it rather than complain because honestly complainers don't seem to get um, much uh, other than criticism back at them uh, hit and miss lab um, current is not velocity of charge uh, I'm sorry hit and miss lab I completely disagree with you on that one uh, I've done a physical experiment um, that um, taught me that uh, equation for current is I equals Q over T charge over time now I'm sorry but that equation is sort of telling me that if T is time and if Q is charge then we have a velocity of charge over time anyway uh, which doesn't include length now it doesn't need to include length because we're talking about a specific point in space which would be in the coil okay and remembering in the video what I discussed was 6.24 times 10 to the 18th electrons past point P in one second one second is time Q is the amount of charge which is 6.24 times 10 to the 18th electrons a huge amount of electrons it's like seriously like it's a firefighter holding a hose that would be completely out of control if that was the case uh, since there is uh, no space dimension it cannot be speed uh, I'm sorry yeah you know, I just I just really just dis disagree I'm sorry but that whole statement that whole um, uh, whole way of thinking is is not even close to what the experiments that I've done show me um, it's it's almost backwards you're, you're almost sort of saying that uh, that charge doesn't flow in a circuit you're almost saying that charge is stationary uh, it's a stationary element but I'm, I'm sorry I disagree with that I've put down here that I disagree with it um, so sorry about that but I do uh, all right and a good a thumbs up there from uh, Tomas Edward so thanks very much Tomas a little bit of positivity uh, those that haven't seen the video um, go and see it I've renamed the video because I think um, talking with a friend of mine solar lab uh, the initial name was a little bit misleading and I don't want to mislead anyone but I, what I do want to do is I want to try and keep this series of videos together it's very easy for a video to get lost uh, already there's one video that should really be part of the series that I've made private that I've only shared privately uh, with some people that I think probably should have been shared publicly and given the same name as well uh, all right so just so that everybody knows I am doing the best I can uh, I have a family as well uh, our family um, look out honestly I'll, I'll be straight up with you our family we have been struggling in the last several years like nothing else uh, we've had sickness illness everything else uh, like many other people have um, uh, so look I'm doing the best I can I, I really do try to give you everything that I can within a certain time frame um, but also try and cater for everybody that's new new coming in uh, I also try and cater for those that um, you know have a lot of experience um, so look I'm really sorry but if, if you know if you sort of find that um, that something I've done is wrong or whatever I'm more than happy for you to speak up uh, but I don't really want to hear just complainers just talking about oh I don't like the color of your website I'm sorry but it's just the way it is you know I've done the best I can over time uh, to try and make this suitable for everybody um, look I even have gone to the trouble of uh, 
giving everybody a link here, help using the forum. Okay, I've done a video um, which goes through and, and describes a lot of the things. I've given uh, pictures, images, how-tos, um, how, what to do down here. Um, so it's not as if there's a lack of information. People have tons and tons and tons of information at their fingertips if they want to go through and, and you know figure it out. Now, this is our categories here. Some of these categories are not available to the average person. You have to be part of the Elite Builders Club. Uh, the Elite Builders Club will vote you in if they think that you have shared enough information um, and that information has to be in the form of uh, experiments. So we expect you to be up to a certain level to become part of the Elite Builders Club. Uh, and the Elite Builders Club is it was a request from several of uh, the members, the long-serving members of um, of our forum. Uh, so I've done that for them. Um, tier three currently is um, in progress. Uh, just just for me, there's no one else that's actually in there. That's where I put some of my um, to come information. In. Um, so look, there's tons of categories here. We we'll tried to cater for hardware, meet and greet, news, notifications, replications. Uh, look, report a troll. You know, seriously, if you think that someone is trolling our forum, uh, send me a message straight away. Tell me who it is, and we will stomp it out. No one gets trolled on our forum. No one. Okay, the great Nikola Tesla. Okay, just some information on the technology, the timing, electrical energy, Mr. Proof experiment, parametric excitations and oscillations, some calls back and some calls don't. This thread here was way underestimated. People probably need to spend more time to learn that. Uh, the key to any mach uh, energy machines, um, parallel wire, by file call it, coil experiment. This is another thread that um, is pretty important. Another thread. Uh, it's very important related to this thread um, delayed conduct conduction and bucking coils um, and measurements we've done a measurements um, thread as well um, this sort of thread was started by Vajura Vajura a very good friend of mine I very much appreciate his um, dedication and help very knowledgeable knowledgeable man so thank you Vajura I appreciate it um, so we sort of started and we sort of started just with a couple of comments and stuff like that uh, big shout out to fighter he's got some awesome technology going on in the background uh, so thank you very much for sharing what you have uh, and we started looking at um, measurements and we sort of started thinking to ourselves well hang on there's still a big hole where people um, are probably not looking at what's going on in the circuit properly Okay, so we started and it's way down here. Now this this is a very important chart uh, to know about. You don't have to know everything about it, but it's very important to know about it. So if we have our power source over here, we have our load over here, and just say for example our load is a light bulb or something similar, uh, just a resistive load, we've got to think about which way the power is going. So if it's um, DC, we're going to be on, on the flat line, uh, and in a, uh, a standard circuit we're going to have power that will flow from the power source um, opposite to this arrow and aligned with this arrow so power is going to flow out okay to the to the load okay so um, power uh, voltage would be applied across the terminals current would flow in the forward direction uh, conventional current obviously is what we're talking about um, I've stuck with conventional current for the simple reason that a diode points in the same way as what conventional current does. Uh, if science is happy to go through and change the um, the diagram on a diode, flip it over, then I'm happy to go with um, uh, non-conventional current, which which is the way that we know that current flows. Uh, okay, I like to just say that so that people know that I'm well aware that current flows the opposite way, um, but we do use um, forward current in the way of thinking. We still even use it today. Anyway, uh, anything above the line or below the line is considered reactive, uh, reactive components. Uh, so we would typically have, if it's above the line, we would typically have 
voltage and current which would have a phase angle difference between them so if it's 90 degrees we might have a uh, say for example a, a current that might be up here uh, whereas the voltage is obviously um, uh, either retarded or advanced from the current depending on which way on the line that you are okay so good to know about handy to know about and we've gone through and what we've done is if we show some more posts and if we can get to those posts we've detailed the requirement of uh, non-inductive um, uh, resistors uh, they can't be wire wound and apparently according to our data sheets these are not wire wound these are uh, just it's just an axial uh, resistor which is fine for measuring the current uh, but in high frequency devices we need to double check and just make sure uh, so appreciate fighter and CD sharps uh, info on that okay so this is the first post that we sort of looked at uh, just so happened that, that I sort of thought well let's look at you know what's going on here and what what sort of the scope is telling us um, a lot of people make the same mistake I used to make the same mistake um, people would normally look at VRMS okay uh, some people would look at the average now VRMS uh, it's the RMS value is always going to be a positive number it's never going to be a negative number um, so the VRMS is not necessarily the best one to use people would normally look at VRMS um, now we need to think about first of all we've got a DC voltage supply okay which a DC voltage supply would supply a voltage which would have one polarity on it the DC voltage supply could only supply a DC current and that DC current would depend on where that voltage su supply was okay so in a linear load um, we go down and we sort of show an experiment down here with a linear load here it is here uh, so no each, each uh, each pixel rep representing the waveform drawn on the scope screen is a potential value okay so the scope is measuring on the scope in the scope buffer the scope is measuring measuring the potential value that's recorded on the scope probes okay between this one the earth and this one the scope probe okay so if we're supplying 4.8 volts at 1 ampere to this globe through these wires then the resistive component here on this metal strip resistor metal strip current shunt um, the voltage drop across that resistor is measured and I've got the scope set up so that it's measured as amperes okay so here where the scope is measuring 977.3 millivolts but we've got to convert that to amps so it's 977.3 amperes now it's linear it's a linear load so our current stays at the same potential all the time okay so because it's a linear load the current stays at the same potential all the time it's not going to change um, now that that's important because we need to know what our um, power supply is capable of doing what it's capable of supplying or not supplying okay and every single time again every single time we get a point measured on the screen if that point is not uh, if, if it's not a positive point then and if it's a negative point then the negative point means its current coming back towards your power supply so every time you have a negative current if you're using a DC power supply if you if you have a negative current or a negative negative voltage or whatever then that is it's it's a negative current which would then flow back towards your power supply so this is a current reading okay again across the vis um, resistors that we saw so these negative uh, points on the scope here are being measured as 
current coming back towards, and we saw that in that diagram that we said that was important, this one. Okay, so if, if our uh, load, it's a non-linear load, okay, because it's not, it's not allowing current just in one direction, what it's doing is it's actually sending current back okay which is 180 degrees out of phase it's sending current back to the power supply all right so our power supply is trying to be be um, be powered by our load nonlinear load sends current back tries to power the power source uh, thinking that it's a load now what it does what it does when this happens is the voltage RMS is telling you that the current coming back to try and power your load the current coming back is used power so voltage RMS or RMS readings are not the right readings to use okay because that's power that the RMS values or the RMS readings are telling you that it's used power okay so you, you're using essentially using 610 millivolts which would be 610 milliamperes in the forward direction that's that's what the voltage RMS is telling you but that's not correct it's not the correct measurement to use okay if you're taking instantaneous power readings and if your load is nonlinear which in our case it is the instantaneous power readings need to be measured as a mean value okay because the mean value is going to tell you how much in the forward direction versus how much in the reverse direction so as an example if we were to measure a perfect sine wave with um, with the mean value the average value we would get zero because in a perfect sine wave we have as much points drawn on top of the screen on top of the zero graticle line on your scope probe we have as many points drawn on the top as what we have drawn on the bottom okay so say for example we take all these points that all these points might sum to one on the bottom we take all the points on the top and that might sum to negative one wrong way around you know what I mean though so if we take all the points on the bottom it, it sums to negative one because they're below the line, we should do it properly. Uh, and then we take all the points above the line and they sum to one, positive one. So we'd have one, take away negative one, which would be zero. So in a perfect sine wave, the average, in a perfect sine wave, the average would be zero. Okay? Because we have as much forward current as what we have backward current. And you've got to remember, AC is alternating current. So your power supply would be able to accept uh, both, or, or at least uh, push, power forward, and then power back again, okay? because it's alternating. And that's why they use RMS, is because they're expecting, RMS is expecting current to go forward and current to come back. So what they're trying to do here using the RMS is say, okay, we've got, current going forward and we've got current coming back we know because it's AC current that it's supposed to happen that way so what we're going to do is we're going to calculate all those figures all the negatives and all the positives we're going to calculate them all as a positive number to show um, that we know exactly what's going forward exactly what's coming back uh, and and that's how it's going to be okay so again if you're using uh, a DC power source and if you are measuring um, a non-linear load, you should always, 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 always look at your average, okay? Because that can go negative. Your average can go negative sometimes, which would mean that you've got more power coming back to your load, or at least to your power source, I should say. So you've got more power coming back to your power source than what your power source is supplying, okay, if it's negative. Right, voltage RMS, it's going to count both forward and back. We've already covered that. Okay, so again, uh, this, is a, this is a very good video. Um, Tektronics have put this video out. Go and give them a like. Um, go and have a quick look at it. How to make RMS mean and area measurements.
Okay, very important again. Um, I just want to cover quickly. Okay, this is the points above the waveform, points of below the waveform. Okay, each one of these points would be all negative. So be negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, da da da. Uh, this would be positive, positive 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, da, 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 da. They would sum up, okay, so sum to a negative value, sum to a positive value, and if the values are the same, so like we said before, uh, negative 1 plus 1, okay, is, uh, is 0. All right, uh, again, very quickly as well, probably going on, rambling too long, uh, most people will know this. The oscilloscope measures the points okay, on the waveform, it draws the points, millions of points are stored in the buffer. Okay, Points would represent a rectangular line, which um, in this case they're drawn quite big, but they would make the rectangular line pretty much like almost zero, just like the, the width of the measurement. Um, and what they do is they take all these points, millions and millions and millions of points, and they measure the area above the zero line. Remember our zero line means that we've got nothing. Zero is zero potential. Okay. And the zero if we're on the zero line, if we have no amplitude, which is the height, if we have no amplitude, then we have nothing. Okay. Uh, this video here is a good video. Um, negative terms. Okay. It explains what I've just sort of said. So anything that's negative um, would be taken away from the positive. So again, negative 1 plus 1 equals 0. Uh, so go through, have a quick look. Um, some of our pages, again, we cover stuff in our pages that um, is more than unique. You're not going to find some of this stuff. You're not going to find it on another website at all. Um, it's just how it is. It's just what we cover. Uh, we're very thorough. We have a lot of detail, a lot of, lot of, you know, a lot of data. So, what I encourage people to do is get on the bench. Okay, set aside a small area somewhere in your house. Okay, put a scope up there, a couple of coils, a small power supply, uh, even even a cheap audio amplifier, uh, and just experiment. Just do simple experiments. Um, you, if you've read our pages, you will know exactly what to look for. Uh, and that is three quarters of the battle over. If you know what to look for, then you, you've, you've already achieved a, a great portion of, of the, um, the goal. Uh, and at that stage, it's just a case of improving it. It's just a case of looking for the effects, making sure that your coils are pose. Uh, it's, it's a case of simple things to improve the, the effects and there's th there's really three things to it okay so make sure that your coils are suitable okay and normally um, we've given some some data for that already on our website suitable coils uh, you'd have to have at least three different coils your primary coil might only have maybe five or ten turns on it might only have a few turns you don't need many turns your uh, secondary one coil and your secondary two coils you, you might have maybe 100 turns or something on it or 60 turns or something on it you don't need a lot um, to start off so just pick something just with a few turns on it uh, you don't have to have each coil wound posing okay I use that because I prefer that it does give me better results but it does work if you just flip one of the coils over as well I've shown that on my website as well um, and just do the experiments. Just do simple experiments. Um, that will give you more progress than any video in the world because you're on the bench and you're doing it on the bench and you can see you can see on the bench what's going on. You can see and feel that the coils will oppose. You can hear them sometimes if you're low frequency. Uh, you'll get a bucking sound. You'll get all sorts of things occur um, and again because you know what to look for now then you have a huge head start it's like you're, you're already halfway through the course you already know what to look for um, all right so again um, so the capability of a current source so we've just been through that sort of know what your current sources are 
is capable of know the, know what it can deliver and know what it can't deliver okay so again if we've got power coming back through here uh, then that can't be coming from your power source if it's a DC power source your DC power source is not capable of of doing that so if you've got negative current coming back to your power supply then that will reduce the overall power that's being consumed so your input power will go down which is a uh, a common typical um, effect of, of the coils of what we are seeing all right so again I, I what I want to do is I want to thank all our members thank you very much um, our members are fantastic we have the best community out there that's why there's so much attention on us all the time um, there's a lot of people that don't want to see us succeed there's a lot of people that try to come cause trouble uh, almost instantly get kicked out we don't put up with silly we are not here for silly um, we are a community that is very strong uh, we are changing uh, the way that people think about uh, this technology we are moving forward we have some people with some amazing devices um, that um, that are keeping it private just for the moment uh, and again what I have shared is um, it's unique people copy off it claim it as their own Hey, really at the end of the day I mean look at the dates you know I, I've, I'm a firm believer in giving people credit for what they do um, people out there like to take the credit um, but look my um, my heroes are Floyd Sweet Don Smith um, I mean if anyone paid enough attention to Don Smith they would see exactly what's going on he told everybody to the letter of what was going on uh, it's not hard it's not rocket science if you listen to Don Smith and if you uh, you know put two and two together then the story is there okay you could if you were, were had the will and the determination to build your own any energy machine um, Don Smith uh, Andre Melanchenko um, look I've, I've shown many 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 hundreds of um, inventors on my um, high IQ website high IQ reference uh, this is pretty much all the people that I think um, have exactly the same technology as what we are trying to share um, or at least similar Melvin Cobb um, Graham Gunderson put me onto Melvin Cobb this man is a legend um, what he's done um, and look I'm I'm the same I'm a Star Trek fan I have been always all my life um, he he's done some amazing things so these people uh, all of them have uh, you know have sort of done what we're doing or or at least close to okay Troy Reed um, what are we I think we're missing a page here we are Nikola Tesla Nikola Tesla he's one of my heroes I mean who's here who's not um, you know got Nikola Tesla as their hero he's a legend Paul Raymond Jensen Raymond Cromeray um, I mean Akula 0083 uh, aka uh, Roman Konohov I'm sorry if I said it wrong uh, Ruslan um, now what I've what I've sort of need to say is Roman uh, aka Akula uh, was a TV electronic um, guy um, I, I have read like I said before I've read that he uh, went into the military and did a uh, electronics either a degree or something similar at least anyway but he went in the he come out with an electronics uh, degree so he knew what he was doing he knew all about radios he knew all about all that sort of stuff TVs the whole lot so he, he had a very good background in all that sort of stuff Russland same deal Russland owns his own TV, uh, sorry I've said a TV station twice now and it's not he owns his own radio station okay um, built a lot of the hardware that he's that he's got he knows all about antennas he knows all about um, you know radio waves the whole lot so this man's got huge experience no wonder he is a leader um, in the um, free energy movement no one listens to him he tries and he tries and he tries he tries to tell people and they all fight him all of them it's, it's just crazy just if people just listened 
you know, to, to those that are trying to share and, and do something, then they might just progress a little bit. S Reason, also known as um, SR193, uh, there's, there's a, a pretty decent story behind what's going on here. Shows an energy machine, again, they all fight him. Uh, he shuts down his forum, which was um, here, forum.next-energy.ru. Uh, -energy uh, shuts down his forum with 24 hours notice. Um, huge amount of information on his forum. Um, he just got sick of it. Just got tired of it. Uh, Terry O. Caponazzi, um, Stephen Mark. Stephen Mark tells us. He tells us how his coils are set up. He says that the secret is in the coils. He tells us, same as what Don Smith did. So anyway, look, uh, if you're not already, come join us. Be part of the forum. Um, we only accept genuine, decent people. If you're not here to help, then you're not welcome sort of thing. If you're here to be part of something better, to help the community, to progress yourself in the field of um, uh, energy machines, then come you're welcome, um, be part of it. Uh, but again, for those people that have had a complaint about my last video, um, I apologize, okay? I am doing the best I can. Uh, I'm trying to share information to everybody out there. Everybody's at different levels, okay? And simple experiments. In this video, I showed, you know, Tin Man's experiment. It's a simple experiment, and it does show the, the concepts. So if people are willing to get on the bench, okay, and do simple experiments and learn these simple things, then they will progress. Okay, I, I can't do it for you. I don't have the time, don't have the will, don't have the money, don't have the... Um, look, I'm, I'm doing everything I possibly can to help people out. And if people want to do that little bit extra to help themselves out, then they will progress. They will make a difference. And... It was, it's only a matter of time before the world has to accept this technology and has to advance with, with this technology. What I'm telling you is true. It works. Okay, it's 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 a proven technology. Okay, if you go here, if you click on the above Unity tag, these are the machines that work. Okay, proven to work. Okay, this is just on our forum. And some of these are, are fairly recent. Tin Man's Rotary Transformer, already been through it. The Meg, Tom Bearden's Meg. We've proven that to work. I've replicated it. It does work. Graham Gunderson's MIT. Russell's Flashlight Without Batteries. Mustidi's um, Partner Output Coil Toroid. Okay, he got that into resonance, and once it was in resonance, it put more power out than what it, what it uh, consumed. Um, so look... Uh, Come be part of it. We've got the technology. We are showing you not only the machines that, that um, have worked, um, which, again, I've said for a long time now, the videos themselves will not help you progress. Okay? You can watch as many videos as you want. They are not going to help you progress. You are not going to be able to get on the bench and then build first up, first device, and an energy machine that works. You need to know the basics. You need to know what to aim for. You need to know what to look for. And then, once you know what to look for, then you can progress from there. All right. So, again, thanks very much for watching. I have rambled. This is a long video. I do apologize. I have rambled. But, um, look, get on the bench and do it. And then you'll, then you'll learn. Then you'll progress. Okay? Thanks for watching. I appreciate everybody, um, especially our members. Thank you.